Hello and welcome to uh, another partnership yoga session. I uh, hope you're all doing well. Do you just come to a seated position, whether that's on your knees, cross-legged or in a butterfly variation, which I'm in at the moment, the soles of the feet together and the knees just coming down to the side. Just take a couple of really nice deep breaths as I talk you through uh, what we're gonna be doing today. Those breaths, ideally in through the nose and out through the nose. Um, we're gonna be working on some vinyasa, uh, flow today, um, incorporating some held poses, of course, as part of this, uh, but with more of the flow dimension than maybe we focused on for the last little while. Um, so wherever you are now, just come to two cross legs and uh, place the hands wherever it's comfortable for you. Take a few nice deep breaths in. Really try and oxygenate the physiological system as much as you can. And just focusing on those core principles of belly button into spine, tailbone down, string from the top of the head. Just set the intention for today's practice. As you just move your weight forward into your hands, and you can just come into a uh, tabletop position here. We're going to run through a couple of cat cows. Inhale, pushing the glutes up, bringing the shoulder blades together. Exhale, arching spine. So we go through a few of these at your own pace. With your own breath. And then we'll come into puppy pose. So hands come out in front and just try and get that chest down towards the ground. That's great. Hands come to where elbows were. I'm just going to bring the toes into play here as we come into a downward facing dog, pushing them out away from you. Maybe get some calf pumps in to begin as we allow the head to hang down. No tension in the neck here. And once you feel maybe you've got a bit of warmth into those calves, you can look to come into the stiller version of this pose. A couple more breaths here as we hop forward into a sumo squat. We have the feet wider than shoulder width apart, toes anchored out, heels on the ground. Try and keep the spine as straight as possible as we breathe. And you can either stay here, and if at any point throughout this session you need a break, just either go into child pose or just stand up, take a little breather. But for those of you that want the bind, we can bring the hand and the arm under the knee and up around the back of the glutes and connect with, so that's a left hand under the knee and then right hand connects. We can look over that right shoulder if you try and sink those glutes a little bit towards the ground, keeping the integrity of the spine there. Breathing through the nose, imagine you've got duct tape over the mouth. As we swap sides, looking over the left shoulder now, Breathing nice and deep. Excellent. From here, we're going to place the hands up above the head as we come up, cross the head with the hands as we then fold, maybe walking the feet in together so that the big toes touch as we come down into our full fold. Half bend, straighten the legs, straighten the back. Connect the fingers behind the back, bring the hands high. Step forward with the right ankle, bring the toes towards the shin as we come into a lunge variation here. We'll step back with that foot, swap the fingers round and come forward with the other foot now. And we're going to release the hands and come into a forward fold again. Half bend, and as quiet as we can, we're going to jump back into a plank. We're going to bring the right knee to right elbow as we come into our pigeon pose. So for those that want to stay up in the king pigeon, nice and high here, that's fine. 
But see if you can get onto the elbows or maybe even bring the head down towards the ground. If it's your right knee that's forward, your left hip's gonna to wanna to come off the ground. So just pushing that back down into the floor. Excellent, we're gonna traverse through plank. Left knee to left, wrist now. As we come down, maybe not coming down, but maybe coming down onto the elbows and then forehead onto the floor. Hi, welcome, Josh. I'm just uh, recording this session for the partnership. But you come on in and um, just set the mat up, all right? Okay. Just join in. Great, right, hands to the floor here, we come back into plank. And we're going to just come into our downward dog. I'm going to angle the left foot out at 45 degrees and lunge forward with the right for our warrior one. Really pushing through that back heel. Trying to keep the hips level here. I'm going to crush the head with the arms. Focusing on that deep breathing through the nose. We're going to release here. We're going to straighten that front leg, micro bend in the knee. We're going to lean forward towards where the right hand is pointing. And once we can't go any further, we're just going to tip into our trikonasana triangle pose. Great. Breathing nice and deep, looking down on the floor or up to the hand if you want a little bit more of a challenge. Trying to keep the body as flat as possible in this pose. We're going to swap the hands around now. So left hand comes down to right foot. Right hand comes up into the air for our twist or variation on trikonasana. Excellent. We're going to step forward with the left and back with the right. We're going to do the same three poses now on the other side. So warrior one. Yeah, that's the better angle there. Ground through the back foot again. Level hips. Compress the head with the arms. And breathing nice and deep. You can release the hands here. Turn the hips out to the side. Straighten that front leg, leaning Forward towards that right hand, uh, that left hand, sorry, and then we're going to pivot down into our trikonasana. You might want to just shorten the start as I had to there, just fractionally. And breathing nice and deep through the nose. And then twisting into our variation of triangle. Excellent. Standing up here and sinking straight into a chair posture. Make sure you can see the toes over the knees. That's a key in chair pose. To bring the arms, sorry, the hands together into prayer and just allow the right elbow to come to the left hand side of the left knee. All right. So you're going to have a little twist and then get that prayer position back. Yeah, you've got it, Josh. Spot on. Sink those hips down a little bit lower. Looking over that left shoulder, breathing. And as we swap sides, we twist on the other side. Hips are going to come up a little bit, so push them back down. Three breaths on this side now. And then we're going to collapse into our fourth floor. Half bend. And then quietly, or not quietly in my case, jumping back into plank. We'll just stay in plank for a breath or two. And then we're just going to hop gently into the cross leg position here. You're going to bring the soles of the feet together for butterfly. 
Hands behind the back and really push the pelvis towards those heels. Try and get the pelvis as close to those heels as you can. Push the knees as far down in towards the ground as you can. Keep strong through the core. Shoulder blades together at the back or towards one another at the back. Strong through the neck, belly button into spine. We're going to come back and cross the legs over. Get a weight pulled into our hands and jump back into a plank. Very good. We're going to lunge forward with the right foot now. We're going to place that left foot down on the ground. And if you're on a hard surface, actually, like we are here, it'd be a good idea just to fold the mat in the middle and place the knee on that fold. So we're in our grounded lunge. Just hands on the hips just to take a breath here. And then we're going to grab that left foot if we can. If we can't, we'll just stay in that grounded position, maybe uh, bring the hands above the head. But if you can catch the foot like this, it's excellent. And just try and pull that in. Try and get both hands on it if you can. Pull that into the glute. Resist the force of the foot pushing the hand back out away from the body. We're going to take that left foot in our right hand and bring our, right, uh, our left hand to our right knee. I'm just going to kind of twist, looking over the right shoulder. Elbow, uh, right elbow pointing back. Excellent. We'll release that. We'll just come back with that um, right foot as we shift that weight behind us into our hands. Engage the glutes as we come forward or rather up and forward with the pelvis. Stay strong in the neck. Really try and, you're still pulling the belly button into the spine, you're pushing the spine and the pelvis out as far away in front of you as you can. It's really good. You're gonna release that. So I'm gonna come forward with the left foot now. Take it right here again, hands on hips. Again, if you wanna stay here for the duration of this uh, asana, that's absolutely fine. But if you're looking for a little bit more, see if you can catch that foot with one hand and bring it into both hands. Pulling it into the glutes. Breathing nice and deep. And then if you want to twist, opposite, opposite hand to foot, opposite hand to knee, looking over that left shoulder, breathing nice and deep for this twist as the left elbow points back. And release. Let's get into that kingdom mat. And so we just put our weight into our hands and come into a cross leg position. Breathing nice and deep, and just come down towards or onto the elbows here, trying to keep the back nice and straight. I'm just going to give a little time check. And keep that back as straight as you can. You got period six. I'm happy to go a little bit longer today. Okay, cool. Just means we're not in a rush to get through it. So, and our partnership schools will benefit from that. Wonderful. I was going to do a slightly longer session in this. Okay, let's cross the legs around the other way. Really pull the feet in towards the glutes here. It's going to feel odd doing this the, the wrong way around, so to speak. Hands come slightly behind and slightly to the side of the buttocks. And I'm going to lift that pelvis up, bring the knees down to the floor. That's really good. Shoulder blades together, strong in the neck, belly button in the spine, tailbone down, pelvis up away from the floor. Breathing nice and deep. That's great. Okay, and uh, jump backs do feel pretty weird when you uh, have your legs crossed the other way around. We'll give it a go. Okay, so hands come above the feet, but below the knees. Okay, shifting that weight forward, you can rock even if you need, and then jump back into back. Excellent. We'll hop into a sumo squat, and as quickly as we came into that, we just come forward for our crow. 
For those of you new to crow, just try it with one foot to begin with. Keep breathing. Just focus on developing that strength and that stamina in the arms. As we jump back into a plank, we're going to hold that plank for a little bit. And straighten my mat off. Just give me a sec. We get back into plank. Come down through chaturanga. Up the dog. And down the dog. Take a few resting breaths and down dog. You come out at 90 degrees now with the left foot and then lunge forward to the right. I'm going to turn the hips out at 90 degrees to the side. Come for our warrior two. Make sure that the back hand isn't too far down. It often likes to sink down a little bit. We're going to look through the middle finger of the front hand as we breathe nice and deep. We're then going to bring the right forearm to the to where the groin and the knee meet. Okay, we're just gonna lightly touch down there and try and create a straighter line as we can from our foot to our hand for extended side angle pose. It's slightly odd one, you got it. So keep bringing that hand right over. Brilliant, really good. Look up to the hand if you want a little bit more. And if it's accessible to you, we're now going to bring that elbow, that left elbow, to the right hand side of the right knee. Come into prayer with the hands. Look over the right shoulder for our extended side angle variation of twist here. Hands down on that, into our plank. I'm going to come down through Chaturanga, up the dog. Down the dog. I'm going to do the same three poses on the other side in just a moment. So you just catch your breath and down dog. Angle the right foot out 90 degrees. Lunge forward to the left now. Open the hips so they come out at 90 degrees also. Arms out to the side. Okay, make sure that back hand is up and then looking through the middle finger. You can see actually here my shoulders are real struggled up. They should be nice and relaxed. So relax the shoulders either side. Breathing nice and deep in warrior two. And then again, just allow that forearm um, to come down where the knee and the groin meet. Bring that hand now over the top of the head, try and create that straight line for extended side angle. You can stay here, or if you want a little bit more, we're going to bring the elbow to the opposite side of that knee as we twist round for that variation, looking right over that left shoulder. Hands touch down, back in the plank, chaturanga. We're going to allow the hand to connect behind the back now. Big toes together, heels together, knees together, hands come up. And we can bring those feet off the ground. We can bring the head off the ground. Just for a couple of breaths, and then into the downward dog again. From here, just a little hop into cross leg. Just gonna catch our breath for a moment here. A couple of nice big deep breaths in through the nose. As we extend the left foot away from us. We're gonna bring now the right foot into the hip crease for our half seated lotus. I'm gonna try and push that knee down towards the ground. For those of you that want more here, you can come into a full fold potentially as I'm demonstrating badly. I'm not good at this one. And I'm just breathing nice and deep wherever you are. You can see here my knees come up a little bit, so I'm not even just 
compound the fourth quarter a little bit so not to sacrifice the integrity of that knee. And we're coming to half of the fishes now. So this foot comes all the way over to the front down. We can hug that knee in just to begin with. And what we're going to try and do is get our left elbow to the right hand side of that right knee. So to do that, our right hand's going to come down behind us and we're then going to get that elbow around. Okay. Looking over the right shoulder, a lovely twist here. And a huge back crack for me, which is always a pleasure. So that foot comes down now. I'm going to come into those two variations, um, those two poses, I should say, on the other side. So left foot now comes into hip crease, flexing through that front foot, and just trying to bring that left knee down to the ground. That left knee is comfortably on the ground. And um, then you might think about the forward fold as well. But as you can see, when I try and forward fold, that knee comes off the ground. So I'm just going to work on keeping that knee down. I feel just close enough to the groin so I can match. A couple more breaths. And then we're going to come to half the fish on the other side. So just for a breath, we can hug that knee in towards the chest. We're then going to bring the right elbow to the left hand side of that knee. Supporting with the left hand and then looking over the left shoulder. Breathing nice and deep, as always. In through the nose, out through the nose. Brilliant. And then get the soles of the feet together again. So you a quick time check. And um, what I want us to do here is we're going to bring the uh, hands above the groin, but then it's going to come under the shins, all right? So above the groin, under the shins. Excellent. Make a little hat over the feet. You got it, Josh. Perfect. Okay. Pull the toes back now. It's always good to try and give your toes a little bit. We, we crunch them up in shoes all day long, so really try and yank them towards the shins there. You don't need to worry so much about the big toes, because uh, we do a lot of toe, toe locks for those. Try and keep that back as straight as you can. Yeah, use the mirrors if you need, that's always a good tool. As we just bring our feet wide now for our uh, strap, our seated forward fold. So get into a comfy position here, because it's gonna get uncomfortable as we know. Flexing through both feet, shoulder blades come together, we're gonna use those uh, Arms just a scaffolding to begin with. Take a couple of breaths so the body gets used to it. Maybe we can widen the stance a little. And once we're feeling comfortable, we're going to get uncomfortable. So try and come out down towards the elbows. Try and keep the back straight, but it won't be straight. Don't worry. Just trying to bring that head forward a little bit. With each exhalation, just try and bring that forehead a little closer down towards the ground. And then we'll go for that toe lock that we spoke about just a moment ago. You got that? Yeah, just about good amount. Excellent. Okay. Try and keep those arms on back straight. Look up ahead. Breathing. And release. So, soles of feet come together. You're going to come into Supervisor Asana. So, shuffle your glutes as close to those ankles as you can manage. Come down onto the elbows. Okay, again, shuffle a little closer to the feet. Okay, try and get all points of the spine to touch the ground. Shuffle again as close as you can get to those feet. And then we're going to mirror the feet with the hands. Try and make sure. As many vertebrae as possible are touching the floor. And breathe nice and deep here. From here, we're going to catch the little toe edge of our feet into happy baby, pushing the hands um, away with the feet, but pulling the feet back in with the hands.
So we can come into a bridge here. I don't think we'll do the wheel today. Anyone at home can do the wheel, just go for it. I'm feeling a little fatigued myself, and it's always important just to listen to the body. The temptation for me is to, you know, show you all that I can do the wheel, but that's not what yoga is about. Yoga is about listening to the body and doing the right thing. You can see here, I've just wedged my hands under my spine a little bit. I'm not pushing on the spine, I'm pushing on the um, small of the back, just to try and give myself a little bit of extra elevation here. And after a couple of breaths, I can take the hands away and you'll see that stay pretty high still. That's where I was. As we gently release down and uh, just come into what I affectionately call the egg, which is definitely not the, not the name for it. Just rock the body side to side as you pull the knees in towards the chest here, flexing through the feet. And from this position, we'll come into our shoulder stand. Always careful of the spine, particularly the neck, as we do this. Once we're up there, I'm just gonna gently bring the feet further and further down towards the floor, maybe touching down. We just take a few nice deep breaths here. And release. Come to cross legs. And then do another time check. Excellent. So we're going to come into our meditative position now, um, which is not going to be seated. It's going to be lying down, uh, our shavasana. Okay. So from your seated position, just get your ankles nicely to the edge of the mat. Okay, as you come down onto your back, just push any excess flesh away from the back and just towards the feet. Bring your shoulder blades towards one another and then just allow them to relax out. And gently pick your head up, pull it away from the body and place it back down. Allow the knuckles to come down onto the ground and close the eyes down. Just focusing now on the breath. As we really hone that focus and that attention into the breathing. You'll notice if you just have a soft focus on the breath, the duration of your breaths will naturally extend. One of the many benefits of yoga there. And what I'd like you to do during this meditation is maintain a soft focus on the breath, but also listen out for any sounds that might be around. For example, here at school, you can hear some people playing football or hockey or something next door. We can hear a hum, maybe some air conditioning or something in the room. I can also hear the sounds of the air passing through my nostrils. Just really try and bring a soft focus onto those sounds as well. Remember, meditation is not about blocking those sounds out, rather, it is about accepting them and allowing them just to pass through our conscious awareness. So just play around in your head with whatever sounds enter the mind's eye and just bring your focus onto them. And anytime you notice that your mind has wandered off and started thinking about past or the future, just bring your attention back to the breath and all the sounds around you. Maybe it's a ticking clock, traffic outside, coming in a fridge, 
Who knows? Let's try and stay focused on those sounds. So any natural mind will wonder. You notice that it has. Bring that attention back to the present moment, to those sounds around you. Be genuinely curious about them. Try and hear something you've never heard before. Or appreciate it in a way that you've not in the past. Feel that the mind has wandered. Or rather, if you notice, just bring it back to those sounds around you or your breath. And as I've said a number of times, the real trick with focus, concentration, meditation, whatever you want to call it, is seeing the internal sounds in your mind in the same way as you see and hear any of the external stimuli that is interpreted as sense data by your mind. We all know that feeling of putting on a song that we like and then realizing we've listened to half the album without actually hearing any of the music. And you can start to treat your mind in that way as well. Turning the volume down on the chatter of the mind, I like to call it. Just trying to block it out, trying to block the thoughts out is counterproductive. As Alan Watt said, it's a little bit like trying to make water flat by ironing it. You know, you're going to ruffle it up even more. So just relax. Just allow all of those bits of sense data to wash over you as you continue to relax and melt away into the floor. One more minute. Soft focus on the breath and the sounds around you. Gently wiggling the toes and feet now. Break the eyes open. And in your own time, come to a seated position. As always, it's a pleasure to practice with you all. And I offer you all a namaste. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, I hope you have a good week in terms of whatever you're doing. See you next time. Bye for now.